I wanted to do a quick demonstration of my new Rickenbacker 330, which I recently got back um, with new wiring and new toaster pickups. Um, I talked through um, the new vintage wiring setup in the previous video, so if you're curious about that, go back and watch that real quick. But something that I didn't do in the last video is talk about how the guitar handles dirt. Now when you think about Rickenbackers, um, it's typically in the context of a kind of bright, clean, percussive, jangly sound uh, with not a lot of overdrive or distortion or fuzz. Um, something like the Beatles or the Birds or, or even Tom Petty, not exactly um, known for really cranking their amps. And certainly the guitar can kind of do that kind of classic Rickenbacker sound, um, something like um, but what I want to explore today is what happens when we kind of kick on some overdrives and fuzzes and see what this guitar can do. And in particular, the kinds of sounds that you get, especially when you're in the middle position and you're playing a little bit with the blender pot. All right, let's go back to the bridge. I'm gonna kick on first the Nobles ODR1. Pretty transparent, maybe just a little bit in the lower mids. And then stack on top of that, um, a Tube Screamer clone, in this case, an Earthquaker device's plumes. Already, um, you can hear the guitar takes wonderfully to dirt. Uh, the guitar is still bright, articulate. Um, you can hear individual notes quite well. Even with all the distortion at present, um, the sound's quite tight. There's not a lot of low end, not particularly woofy. Um, sounds great for for riffing. really interesting is when you put it into the middle position and you begin to kind of play with the unique Rickenbacker sounds. Um, so here we have right in the middle you can hear to my ears it's a little woofy, a little little woolly. So we can solve that in one of two ways. Um, the first we can do is use the fifth knob the blender pot to kind of roll back on the neck pickup. You can hear already it tightens up. Um, the mids kind of rush to the forward. Overall just kind of sounds better. To my ears, it gets even better when we add in um, a bass cut on the bridge pickup, um, which is one of the mods that I had installed on this guitar that brings the Rickenbacker closer to how it would have been in the 1960s. So I activate that. A little honkier, a um, little more vintage sounding. I absolutely adore it. Um, you know, 70s riffs. Is that how it goes? No. Besides rhythm, 
you know, just this kind of bright percussive thing that Rickenbackers are all known for, uh, the guitar can still do solos. It certainly doesn't have the sustain of a Les Paul or, say, even a Telecaster, but it can hold its own. still tough especially with flat wounds vintage frets it's, you know it's hard to do the kind of can't really do the telly style bins on here it's a little tough so you have to kind of change up your technique a little bit I don't mind. If I want to riff, I have other guitars that I can do that on. Um, another thing that I think is quite good is that the fact you have vintage pickups that are somewhat low output, um, the guitar really takes well to fuzzes um, or other kinds of germanium devices that with other guitars with hotter pickups may be a little fussier. So I have here a treble booster. Um, switch back to the bridge pickup real quick. <laughs> Rolling back on the volume, just a, a wealth of gorgeous tones. There it almost sounds like, how's that go? song very well. But you can get a feel for just how the guitar totally takes this fuzz. Thank you. 